Hi, this is Todd Selig, a senior artist at Wise Engineering. Here we have Bob, an 80s themed Street Fighter character, which will be part of an asset pack available in the Unreal Marketplace. Today I will be focusing on the Retopology tools new to Marvelous Designer 9. We will be working on Bob's jacket, converting the simulate garments from this to something that looks more like this. Let's begin. Okay, so we're, we're here in 3D Studio Max, just so I can emphasize the, uh, the reason why we would manually retopo versus remeshing or using the quadrangulate that's available in, uh, that comes straight out of Marvelous. Um, if Bob was going to be a character that was going to be for printing or just a static mesh, then what, what you get out of Marvelous would be fine. But since Bob is going to be for a game, he needs to be uh, skinned and rigged so over here we got we got two bobs we got a uh, good bob and bad bob we got good bob which is he's traveled around he's been to marvelous he's been to 3d studio max he's been in zbrush substance painter he's he's been everywhere and he'll eventually go in the maya um then we got bob over here who is straight out of uh he doesn't like to travel <laughs> he's been only a marvelous, that's the only thing, only place he's been. He hasn't experienced the world. Um, so, so, let me just show you right here. So here's, we got nice quads on um, Bob from Marvelous, but as you see, like, if you select polys, you're going to get, like, this one right here. This poly loop, is it, it's all crazy, and it's not, I don't know, you're probably going to have somebody skin and be... Whoever's going to skin this guy is going to be angry. Not going to be me. <laughs> so then we move over to the guy that we topologize. And, um, you know, you select the loops. You, you get a nice loop all the way around. And then when you want to grow your loops for... It, it's predictable. You see what happens. See, we got nice, even um, selection there. Same thing. Well, the pants are similar. These were retopologized too. And if you, same thing would happen between the two. Um, uh, some of the, let me jump back into Marvelous and uh, point out some of the advantages of retopologizing in Marvelous. Uh, it's easy to create basic quad mesh that you can quickly refine to match high poly garments. Uh, I know there's ways to do it in Maximaya, but um, it seems. A little cumbersome. I never tried them, so I, it's not fair for me to compare, but um, I've, I've watched tutorials on how to do it. It seems a little tricky, where in Marvelous it seems straightforward. Um, the, the other advantage is in Marvelous it's a symmetrical workflow, so when I start retopologizing on these 2D patterns, because that's kind of how you do it, you jump back and forth between the two panels. Uh, when I start with topologizing on this side, it's automatically going to create topology for the other side of his, his jacket. So as long as there's symmetry, you kept symmetry between the, the two sides, then whatever you create on one side, when you retopologize, it's going to cop, it's going to translate over to the other side. Uh, some of the disadvantages of retopologizing in, in Marvelous are it's new and it lacks a lot of the retopology tools that several of the existing 3D packages have. Um, I mean, another thing, it works well on individual pieces of clothing. So, uh, so when I, retopologizing this is fine, but when I start retopologizing other articles, it becomes cluttered really fast just because there's there's no way to as far as I can tell, when you're top, retopologizing, there's no way to hide uh, other garments that were, were retopologized. You almost have to, for each article of clothing, it seems like it would be easier to create a file and retopologize the jacket and then create another file, retopologize the pants, and, and do it that way. Unless I'm missing something, but from what I could tell, that was the only way to do it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's about it as far as that goes. Okay, let's talk about the geometry settings in Marvelous Designer. Um, by default, Marvelous simulates using triangles. 
uh, I believe you can change this so it'll simulate using quads, the quadrangulated version. Um, but I'm not exactly sure. So to display our triangles, let's go up here to our display settings and then select the shaded wireframe version. Um, and you can see your triangles. To switch over to the the quadrangulated version, it, all you do is you select, you know, select your mesh, right click, and then choose quadrangulate, and it'll switch over to quads. And then you got the you got the quads which you saw earlier. Um, what I'll normally do is I will export two meshes. I'll export my retopologized mesh as my low poly mesh and I'll export this version as my high poly mesh. I'll bring the two in the ZBrush and I will project the low poly version, the low poly retopologized re version onto this high poly quad version. Um, there's also an, another option which was introduced in Marvelous 8. It's called uh, remeshing. I'll show you that real quick. So you select, again, select your polygons, right click on our character, and uh, we'll select remesh beta. It, it was beta in 8, and it's still beta, so I don't know what's going on there. Okay, so now we get we get these nice quads for the most part, and you got these nice uh, poly loops here. But the problem is you get these triangles wherever the two pieces of garment meet up, which I ran into problems in ZBrush when I tried to subdivide. It would create all kinds of artifacts. So I I I kind of stay away from this version here. Um, so as far as that goes, that's that's about it for the the uh, geometry settings that I can think of. Okay, let's go over some of the retopology tools and how they work. But first, let's uh, set up some binding keys to uh, to these two buttons up here, which are um, the edit topology, which I have assigned to F3, and the create topology. You're going to be jumping back and forth between the two of these. so. I recommend setting hotkeys up. Um, so in order to do that, all you do is go to settings, user settings, and shortcuts, select your retopology, select create topology, hit your F4, uh, edit topology, F3, or whatever you want to use. You can use whatever. Uh, close that out, and then you're, you're set. Um, here, I got a list of the, some of the tools. So in order to create polygons all you do is we're going to go into the the create mode up here um, and then you just start left click drawing out your your polygons um, and you can you can make quad polygons and you can make uh, triangle polygons you you can't make end gods if you make an end gone, it'll just show up as incomplete and you'll have to you know, complete it like that. Um, you can you can backspace in order to undo. So if you start drawing something and you, you messed up, um, if you have backspace, it'll undo and, and you can then continue again. Um, what else do we got? We got uh, to move vertices. All you do is you simply you, you left click on Oops, sorry. That isn't simple. <laughs> you got to go into edit mode and then just left click and drag and you'll move it around. And you'll notice that you can't go outside of a, a, gar a pattern. So you, this is it. You're restricted to that, which is, is actually kind of nice. Um, to select a whole, whole pattern, the vertices, all you do is you double click, double left click on uh, one of them and it selects, it'll select all your verts within that pattern. Um, and with, uh, it'll do this with edges, it'll do the same. So before I do that, let me show you this. If you wanted to add, uh, if you want to add edges to something, 
like if you want to add edges here, you would just be in your, you have to go to create mode and then you hold down control shift and then you'll see, you, you can manually place your edges and left click. So I'll add a bunch of edges here, uh, edges here. And if I wanted to select this um, edge loop here, I'll go to edit and then double click and then you selected your whole edge. You can select your whole edge. Uh, you can also, after you have it selected, you can slide your edges around. Um, what else can you do? Uh, to select, like if I wanted to select these three verts here, I have to hold down control and draw a window around them. Um, if I wanted to merge these vertices, I would then, let's see, right click and then hit merge and it'll allow you to merge them. There's also uh, merge, merge all, which brings up you, you can select the tolerance. I, I wouldn't recommend using this because it seems to, so if, because if you have some, a pattern outside of your view and you hit merge all, I believe it'll merge things that you don't even know. Um, here's what I was talking about earlier with the symmetry, symmetry. Uh, when you draw on one side, it'll, it'll draw, it draws on the other. Um, what else is there? Uh, you can't, you can't delete edge loops which are rings which is kind of annoying so if I double if I select this edge loop and then I delete it it's gonna delete the polygons and then if I um, delete these it deletes everything and you just have the only way to fix it is to to uh, go into your create mode and redraw the the lines it back in um, take everything uh, It'd be nice if there was a, a target weld. That'd be nice if they added that, maybe in a future version. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Let's jump into retopologizing our character. I'm gonna try to clean up the scene a little bit by turning off our avatar over in the display settings, turn him off, and then I just wanna work on the jacket. So I'm gonna Select the jacket and then hit Control Shift I, which is going to inverse my selection. Right click and do hide pattern. And now we're just focusing on the jacket. Um, now I'm going to hit my F4, jump into the up here, create topology, and I'm going to start with I'm going to start with this pattern back here for no particular reason. Um, So just start clicking and, and drawing out your vertices like so. And going like that. Subdividing manually. I'm gonna add some uh, edge loops to the shoulder. Uh, and that's that's good enough like right there as far as don't add any more detail than that You want to keep your details simple. Otherwise, it's going to become overwhelming when you try to move um, Move and align vertices. So now I'm gonna go edit just stretch this out See it won't let me go past like we talked about earlier. we will go past the pattern pulling these guys out uh, Like that uh, I want to, I want to get a nice edge flow going around the, the arm here. So like right now it's it's going down. I want it to, to wrap around. So I'm going to delete this polygon and then just sort of re redo this. Jump over to create, create a polygon there, 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 that. And now you can see it's going to start the flow around there. And I'll jump over to here and essentially do the same thing that I just did here. Back into create. And put in our vertices. And uh, 
I'm going to do the same on the shoulder here. Add two loops. Um, oh, let me add a couple more here. I'm trying to keep these the same. Same amount of polygons. And like this. Like that. Create. Create. And I'm just gonna push these around. Try to keep them try to keep these evenly spaced. Like that. That and now we can jump over to our 3D view and we want to try to align these these vertices with each other. Um, you, they're not going to weld here. You could stitch them together, but I I don't. I usually bring it into into Max and then stitch them. Um, if I have time, I'll sh I'll show you how I did that later. So you get that. So you see these line up. Um, let's see, we'll create this shoulder piece right here. Now you see it's creating your symmetry. Did it to the side and it's, it's automatically creating the other side. So you can, you can quickly lay something out. Um, oops, let me go back. I'll put one here. Okay. And edit, slide this over like that. Oops, try. I'm looking at my 3D view, trying to line up that edge, get it as close as possible. Go in here, edit mode, line that up, line that up. Okay. You see now we got everything's wrapping around. And me let's add a couple we'll add one here for now. And uh do two here. Yes. No, let me do I'm gonna do two here. Okay. Um, now I'm going to do this arm band. You can see it starts to get cluttered with vertices. And so now we, this is difficult because you have this collar here, which is hi hiding the geometry underneath. So what I like to do is I'll hit, uh, I like to jump back over into the transform mode A and I'll select these patterns temporarily. And this will help a little bit. Um, hide these patterns and then jump back into hit to the F3 or edit. And then it's, it's easier to see what's going on. Here, let's do a pocket. Uh, you just go like this. And you make a polygon and then right click. Uh, what can we do here? Add subdivision to current. Well, I'll show you this later, but we'll do that. Oops. There's your pocket. That should be it. All right, is that it? That's the whole. Whole jacket, retopologized, or sort of. There's still another step. So now we're going to add division and remesh our geometry. It's really nice when you do this in Marvelous because it auto when you subdivide it automatically starts to fill in all these gaps and uh, accentuate the the wrinkles and fold. So in order to do this, all you do is you click on, um, 
your your mesh and then you do add subdivision. Let's get in close so we can so you can see what's happening maybe a little better. You get in here and like you can see right here where we recreate our mesh, it kind of skims over this this detail here. So now I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna do add division. Oh no, uh, you can do you if you right click over the pattern, it'll add division only to this current piece. If you right click out side on the blank canvas and do add division, it's going to add division to the entire jacket. So we'll do that. And you see it, it, it sucked it in. It added division to the entire uh, jacket. Um, now, it, see, if you go over to your, your transform, it's still, it's still not there. The, the remesh, it's still the old mesh. So what you got to do is, um, again, right click in the blank part of your canvas and then do a, I do remesh all and duplicate. If you do remesh and, and replace, it'll get rid of your construction history. So if you do remesh all and duplicate, it'll create a new mesh and keep this construction history. I'll show you right now. So I remesh and there we go. Uh, and if we jump over to transform pattern and we move this up, there we go. And here's our low poly and here's our high poly. Um, and then if we, we go back, we can see here's our remesh right here. And then we still have our construction history, which is nice. If we had to go in and do some more edits and then we could, um, remesh again. So once let's go back over here and uh, turn this off. This is our high poly. We're going to hide this. And here we are. We're left with our, our low poly mesh, which is nice. Um, and the only thing we have to do next is we'll export it. What I like to do before I export it for ZBrush purposes is because in ZBrush I'll um, you, you there's an option to create poly groups from UVs. So in what I'll do is in Marvelous I'll go up here where it says simulation. I'll click on that. I'll go to the UV editor. There's a UV editor in here, and uh, I'll just well we got the whole thing here. I'll just do. Cause you don't really have to arrange them. It doesn't matter. It's, we're only doing it for, I'll do, um, set UVs from pattern alignment and it'll lay out your UVs the same way they were over in the pattern view. And then I'll right click and do fit to unified zero one. And it just puts it in there. I mean, that's all right. You can move them around, but the only reason I'm doing this is for it's not final UV layout. It's only for ZBrush purposes. I just do that real quick. Um, and then we jump back over to simulation mode. And uh, yep, that's that's it for that. Um, what I like to do at this point is I'll export this jacket into a 3D Studio Max. Um, let me go over the process real quick. So I'll uh, select my garments in the pattern window. Go over to File, Export, Object Selected. Override that, and then I will select, leave it on thin, because I don't want to add thickness. I'll do that in ZBrush. Um, I want to turn on Unified UV Coordinates, Other, because if I don't turn this on, then your UVs won't that we create won't show up uh, and I export in centimeters and I do that's it okay um, and then in 3d studio max what I'll do is I will import my mesh the low poly jacket and convert it to edit poly I'll select the borders, all the borders, or wait, actually, no, I'll do it. Hold on. I'll 
I'm going to deselect all these elements that aren't going to be welded to the, the jacket, like these flaps and pockets. They're, they're not going to be welded. You detach them. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to go back into select my borders. Control A, all borders, and then I'm going to convert that to vertices. And I will weld them. Okay. Now, here we go. Now everything's sealed up. We got our pockets and everything. Um, so my typical game character workflow would be I would create and retopologize in Marvelous, Marvelous Designer. Then I would uh, import both the high and low poly meshes from Marvelous into ZBrush. And then in ZBrush, I'll uh, project the high poly model onto the low poly. And I'll sculpt, add details such as seams and additional wrinkles. And from there, I'll export a low and high poly version as ZBrush, which I will then bring into Substance Painter for texturing. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you want to see more of these videos, let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching.